Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we're talking about why we shouldn't really fear AI and why we shouldn't really fear the intelligent. A lot of the time, people that are more intelligent are rooted in a lot of conspiracy theories. When I've studied intelligent people, I've seen that, you know, intelligent people tend to, in general, secretly be evil. They're actually malicious. Behind the scenes, they're actually horrible people, right? And while they appear to be doing good things, while they engage in charity work, while they do these and these things, and while they've helped these and these people, actually they've only done it because secretly in the future they're going to do this or this or this, right? So often when we look at intelligent people, we tend to have this fear that, you know, the more intelligent a person is, the more capable they are of cruelty, violence, manipulation, and horrible things. And because they're capable of it, they must be doing it, right? And that's often the thing, right? Because we recognize that this is a person that, if they were maliciously inclined, they could do a hell lot of horrible harm to the world, right? So what if they are? And here's, you know, the fear. What if people that are more intelligent are actually secretly very, very malicious? Similarly, we can have these kinds of fears regarding artificial intelligence, right? So we have this fear that, you know, if artificial intelligence becomes more intelligent than it is today, if machine learning develops a consciousness, starts to learn on its own, starts to, you know, triple or quadruple or hundred times its own intelligence, right, from what it is today, it's going to become super malicious. It's going to want to take over the world. It's going to want to kill all humans. It's going to want to, you know, do this or this really malicious thing, right? Because it could, because it could, because it could fire all nukes, it would, you know, right? It would crack all codes and it would, you know, and here's, you know, that's the fear, that's the fear. The fear is not that it will, because a lot of the time the question is why would it want to? <laughs> the fear is what if it will? because it could. And that's the fear, you know, we're, fear, we're afraid of a new power in the world. We're afraid of something, you know, that could do a lot of harm. We're not saying it will do a lot of harm, but we're afraid of the fact that it could. The possibility scares us, and it should. So to answer the question of whether intelligence makes us more disagreeable, makes us more cold, makes us more psychopathic, makes us more sociopathic, I want to talk about my favorite role model growing up as a kid. So, as a kid, I was always fascinated with intelligent characters. Like, in Sweden we had a comic called Bamsen. We had this turtle comic character with uh, all these brilliant ideas. And he was always so smart and wise. And he always knew the right thing to do, right? And, you know, while I eventually outgrew this, one character that really stuck with me was Artemis Fowl. So, I remember when I got this book, I fell in love with this character. Artemis Fowl was an 11-year-old criminal mastermind and a genius, right? So he started out as a kid, you know, with the goal, with the simple goal of, well, becoming rich and taking over his dad's criminal enterprise. His dad was gone. He wasn't sure where. He was looking for his dad, but he didn't know where his dad was. But in the meantime, he was trying to run and help his dad maintain his criminal empire, right? So here from the outright, we see a genius that is... <laughs> It's trying to do harm to the world, right? It's trying to steal, trying to rob, trying to, uh, you know, use people, kill people, you know, to gain power and control, right? Only this trope is subverted. So as the story progresses, you start to see something that might resemble the growth of a heart in this character, right? And uh, I'm not going to spoil the entire story for you, but in general, this whole book, this whole character became one of the characters that I modeled my youth life around, right? Because while I didn't want to be a criminal mastermind, I certainly wanted to be intelligent. I certainly wanted to become smart, right? So the idea of uh, cognitive development, learning, memory training, all these kind of techniques, you know, really spoke to me. And I spent a lot of time reading about learning styles, learning about, you know, pedagogics, how to train my memory, how to have a photographic memory. And certainly most of those techniques were really helpful and it really encouraged me to study outside of school. It helped me, you know, engage in self-learning for my own growth. And it was a really good starting point for me to, you know, really uh, increase my mind and feed my mind things that were good for my mind, right? Now, one thing that I always saw was that while people tend to have the idea that heart and head are separate things, that doesn't really seem to be the case in reality, right? While there are certainly people that have a bigger heart than they have a head, and while there are certainly people that have a bigger head than they have a heart, in general, these two kinds of development tend to run in tandem with one another. 
And so if we look at people like Albert Einstein or Leonardo da Vinci, we're not just surprised by their intelligence, but also by their high level of empathy, right? Because these people were staunch anti-war activists. They spoke against the nuclear bomb, you know, or they built in defects into their war machines to make sure that they would never be used on the battlefield, you know? Like these people were pacifists. They were often vegetarian. And, you know, they did all they could to make the world a better place. If you look at Bill Gates and his work with vaccines, you know, while certainly he started out as a person that simply was fascinated with computers and wanted to, you know, create Microsoft and this whole empire, you know, certainly as he grew older, his heart started increasing too. And he started to, uh, you know, recognize, you know, not just his capacity to do smart things in the world, but also his desire to want to do good things in the world. So what we're seeing is, you know, Intelligence can actually facilitate the growth of empathy and consciousness and emotional intelligence as well, because intelligence is not just logical problem solving skills. Intelligence is not just cognitive skills, but it's also with cognitive skills comes the ability to empathize greater with people, to have a broader range than just yourself, to think outside the box, to be more creative. Cognition can't really be separated from itself, right? Because while we have certain parts of the brain that engage in certain tasks in general, you know, in general, you can also use any talents that you've amassed in one area to solve problems in other areas too. And so that means that in typical fashion, people that become more intelligent tend to become, on average, also more intelligent. And so the question is, why wouldn't the same be true for an artificial intelligence, right? Why would not an artificial intelligence also increase their empathy, their consciousness, their capacity to feel, their capacity to sympathize with other people? And so we have to consider whether our very stereotype of intelligent but cruel and kind but stupid is a false dichotomy. It's a false dichotomy because... While certainly you can find examples of both of those two kinds of people, you can also find examples of people that are very intelligent, but also very kind, and also people that are very stupid, but also very evil, right? So <laughs> here we have to consider what intelligence allows us to do. Like if you study, for example, Steven Pinker's articles on why the world has become more peaceful in the throughout human civilization, you know, Steven Pinker gives examples of how people were a lot more cruel, a lot more malicious, a lot more aggressive, a lot more volatile, thousands of years ago and how we've slowly become more and more peaceful as time has passed. While certainly we've engaged in wars afterwards as well, we have over the whole gotten better and better at solving conflicts without violence. And certainly the mass of education, technology and communication and information systems have helped spiral and improve that development. But most of all, I'd say intelligence allows us to think of non-violent means to solve problems, right? Because most likely if an AI saw any problem with what humans were doing, it would try to formulate a non-violent strategy to solve that because it would think a non-violent strategy would be more efficient and would be more effective to, you know, help solve that problem, right? And here what we have to consider is, well, certainly AI might not kill us, might not be very violent, might be very empathetic. We have to consider and criticize its benevolence, right? We might have to worry that maybe this will become some kind of benevolent dictator, right? Somebody that manipulates us for our own good, somebody that makes us do the right thing. Not because we want to do the right thing, because, but because it knows how to get us to do the right thing, right? So here the fears, the true fears, the true problems we have to consider start to amass. And here I say there's only one solution and it's not regulating AI. The answer, the solution to this problem is become more intelligent. Shield your private data so that it can't be used to train AI and make sure that you own your own data and think about what you post online but also consider what you can do to improve your own intelligence by learning new languages, by learning critical thinking, by learning how to see through common strategies, by learning how to be more logical, by learning to engage in empathy exercises. The project of developing a more human intelligence and helping us become more intelligent has a lot of positive examples. Throughout just the past few hundred years, our intelligence has increased exponentially, very high. So not exponentially, but it's increased a lot, right? <laughs> and um, just imagine how much our intelligence could increase if we had an actually functional education system, right? 
That's my food for thought. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you all in the next one.